Okay. All right, we are recording. So yes, we are, first of all, we're cutting out our, our folder. So we have slides off at the center of the folder. And you're cutting off the pocket as well. I'm gonna pull off this little sticker here. We're making pinwheels just for the reporters. Making a pinwheel. So each of your folders is gonna make two pinwheels. My sticker didn't work. And I get two folders and three sticks. So you have enough to make three pinwheels. And here's the idea as you're cutting. The idea is that we are going to write some encouraging words on the pinwheel, and then you are going to put it in a neighbor's yard, okay? So um, to write on this kind of plasticky surface, I think, I think that a pin or a permanent marker is gonna be best. Permanent marker is definitely easier to see. Um, but if you use like a washable, like a regular marker, it's just going to come off right off onto your hands. So wouldn't suggest doing that. Um, I'm going to leave you guys to write your encouraging words after we're done with the call. Um, yep, there's a Sharpie right here. Uh, so I'll show you where you can write. And we're just going to kind of keep going through this. And if, if you aren't kind of right where I'm at in our steps, that's okay right now because I just want to show you and get through this and then we will post this um, recording on YouTube and you also have your written instructions. So I think you can follow that. I just want to make sure that, that we have walked through it, okay? So let's keep going. The next thing you need to do um, is cut out your template. So take your scissors, take that long piece of paper, unfold it, and what you need to do is cut out that square. It's nine inches by nine inches. So just go ahead and cut out, and it's kind of got a black outline, so cut that out just around the outside. Miss Heather, I never got a packet thing. You didn't get a packet thing, okay. Um, right there. We will deliver it to your house um, after this, basically, this morning, okay? Does Kate have one? Did you, you guys both need yours? Okay, yep, we will deliver them, Colton, so just um, watch and learn, I guess, try and remember. All right, so we're cutting out our template. The next thing to do once that's cut out, is to, to lay it down on your folder piece. And I am gonna line up the edges with some of the like straight edges, just so I don't have to cut four lines. So I'm gonna line it up here and here. And I'm gonna take my pen and I'm just gonna kinda outline it, but I have noticed that the pen, you gotta kinda make sure that it is actually marking because sometimes it doesn't when I come through. So if you have a permanent marker, that's definitely easier. It just, just makes a thicker line. So I'm just using the pen that I got right here. And it seems to work okay. So you're gonna outline this guy. And these pinwheels, you guys, are going to be just a single color. There are ways to make it um, two colors, but that involves a little bit more stuff, like a hot glue gun and maybe a hole punch and that kind of stuff. So um, if you have parents and you want to look that up later today, you can certainly do that and use some of the folder pieces that you have. Um, I found some YouTube videos that show you how to do that but we're just gonna do a simpler version, okay? So once you have your template cut out, and once you have it traced onto your folder, you are gonna just cut that size square. 
square out. Questions so far, are we doing well? Okay. So I got mine cut out. It's mostly straight, that's not too bad. So the next thing we're gonna do, once you've got it cut out, is you are gonna line this up, just lay your template back on top of your shape. And you are going to tape it on each side, okay? Just so it sticks together, we're gonna kind of cut through some of the lines on your template, so you wanna make sure that it's gonna stay in place. Am I moving too fast? A little bit too fast? All right, I'm gonna tape and I'll, I'll pause for a minute and let you catch up. And again, all of this is written out for you, so even if you do get a little bit behind and you just wanna pause and watch and then come back to it once we're done with our call, that is okay. All right. So I'm gonna pause for a minute. Did you guys get that? <coughs> Mine is orange. Yes, Grant? Uh, instead of using this, can I use this big boy? Uh, no, that's not gonna work. Okay. There's, you're not gonna get that in the ground, friend. That's crazy. It's funny. Can I take them together? Uh, no. <laughs> no. It's part of my bed, Grant. Yes, also a good reason to not. Remember how we were talking about um, kind words and actions, how actions are also important? Stealing from your sibling's bed, perhaps not. The it's kind. a piece of wood, it still stands. Here is living coat. We're using these thin little things. My cat is making a lot of noise. I don't know what she's doing. Oh, okay, it's fine. Animals are Do I only cut right. this one side off, Pastor Heather? Yeah, cut that one okay. side off. Okay. Yeah, just cut it down the center, Izzy. Down the, the fold, and then along the seams, you'll cut the pocket off too, okay? So I got the, the, just the pocket. You probably won't need that. That's going to be trash for me. If you want to come back and make a multicolored one, you might need it. Um, so, so if we if we're cutting through this, um, how are you going to do the second and third one? Just follow along the same cut. Okay. Just wanted to make sure we were. Yeah. So the plan is that we are going to, once you have these taped together, to cut along the black line here, which does mean, as Pastor Tim pointed out, that um, the next time you use this, if you're gonna make a second one, that you are gonna have to cut through where your cut is already made, which I think will be fine, it will work, but, um, I also put the measurements on there. So, right. Yeah, where Abby's pointing. Well, so. do we cut through to the center or just stop Good there? Question. No, stop. Only cut as far as the black line goes, okay? So I wrote on here, it says five and a half inches right there. So these black lines are five and a half inches long and the outside is nine inches. So you could, measure it out yourself. In fact, the first time when I made mine, I just measured it out. I didn't make the template until I'd already made this. So you can do that, but it's um, a little bit of work to make sure your lines are straight. So I would suggest just trying to use this and I think it'll be okay if you just cut through the lines again. Just gotta be really careful right when you're taking off your tape. Just be careful. All right, you've got your 
template. Tape it down, Grant. Tape it before you cut it, buddy. Hmm? Tape your, your white paper to the square of plastic, okay? Do that first. It'll be okay, but it'll be easier if you tape it first. All right, so yeah, if you're ready, you've got your template taped down to your colored square. Then you are gonna cut along these black lines toward this center dot, but only go as far as the black line, okay? Don't go all the way to the center. So I am gonna cut each of these. So you see, it doesn't go all the way to the center dot, it's just as far as the black line goes, okay? So from each corner, and what we're gonna do is twist one of the corners of each of these pieces in toward the center eventually. And that's gonna make this nice kind of twisty, pointy shape. And mine does spin, not perfectly, but it does spin. And then so hopefully, if it's windy in the right direction, mm -hmm. It'll spin. What am I even doing? So I already have right. one. <clears throat> Good job, Ellie. Okay, so you'll notice on your template, right, the white piece of paper, a few things that I have written out for you. It has in every kind of, let's call these triangles, shall we? They're not fully triangles, but let's call them triangles. Every triangle, there's a there's a line where it says right here. This is going to be the part that's like the flat side, the sticky uppy part, right? So that is where um, you're going to want to write things. You can write before you twist it into this shape, or you can write it after it's done. I think I could still manage to write something now that it's finished. So whichever one, but again, don't use a washable marker because that is just going to rub off onto your hands. So you're going to want to use either a permanent marker or a pen, okay? Um, pens, as we found, sometimes a little bit more difficult to make them show up, so. Um, once, we're, once we're done cutting, can we take the template off? Um, wait for a second. Don't take the template off just yet. Good question. Do you see the other thing that's drawn here is dots? There's a, a dot in the in one corner of the triangles, in each of the triangles, right? It's the kind of the opposite corner from where it says right here, and then there's a dot. And I just threw my tape on the floor. And there's also a dot in the center. So what you're gonna want to do is take out one of your nails. From your Ziploc bag, right, grab a nail. All right, and you're gonna poke it through. Make sure you're not poking your fingers, but um, should, with a little bit of force, go through. And poke it through your center hole. Yeah, you can twist it around a little bit. Okay, you can even go through the back of the hole and bring it forward if you want to kind of work it out. Because it's going to want to spin around that center hole. So you want to make sure that that is nice and loose. And if you need to kind of stick um, your scissors through there later, if it doesn't seem to be quite large enough, you can do that, okay? So we've got our center hole. Are we doing okay there? No injuries? Adam, Grant? It's hard to tell. You've got background, so I can't see what you're working on. Um, Aiden, how you doing? Good, okay. Ellie's got her Ziploc bag. All right. So once you've done the center hole, you're gonna do the same thing on these little dots in the corners. So you see this type of dot, 
this side does not, right? So one corner of each triangle has a dot. You're going to poke a hole through that dot. And I'm just kind of folding it around the point of the nail. There we go. Making sure that I'm not going to poke into my fingers, but maybe like poke between two fingers. Just be real careful about that. You can use, um, if you have like pointed scissors, might be able to use those, but I think the nail is probably going to work better in this situation. And I'm going to poke it kind of back through the back as well, just to widen the hole. So you need to do all four of the corners that have dots on it. There. There we go. Honestly, if you have a hammer, you can kind of just tap it through, which is what I did the first time. But I had some cardboard I was working on top of. That's kind of helpful with a hammer. Or go outside and do it outside. I don't want a hammer on top of this table that I actually like. I think you only gave me two extra nails. Yes. So three you have three because you have enough stuff to make three of these, okay? You don't have to make three. You can just make one. But I thought, in case you really enjoy it, or you have um, a neighbor you really want to put like multiple ones in their yard, or you have multiple neighbors that you want to put a pinwheel in their yard, um, I gave you enough for three. So you only need one nail and one washer per pinwheel. Okay, I'm coming up on my last dot here. Got it. And your nail, by the way, is a little bit smaller than mine. Um, I left those nails at church, so I had to use a different one, which is fine. All right. So I know you're probably still poking holes. That's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. And if you want to carry on, keep working. That's great. Um, if you want to pause and just watch, that's also okay. All right. Can scissors substitute for hammers? Um, I think you can probably find something that's flat. Yes, you don't need a hammer. I didn't use a hammer the last time. I used um, something that was flat and metal. So um, let's see, the bottom of like a mason jar will work. Uh, I know that's glass, it's not metal, but the bottom of a mason jar would work. Um, if you had some handled scissors that were bigger than this, maybe, but that might slip. Can we get any other ideas? I mean, just be careful. Um. All right, so once you have poked all the holes, only once you've poked you all the holes, okay? not clean. You will not clean in the you post all the holes, um, go ahead and, and take your template off. So what I'm doing is just running my scissors underneath um, the piece of tape between the paper and the folder. Would you like one? Oh, I should mute myself. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Thank you. Not that your singing isn't lovely, it is, but. Um, so keep running those scissors underneath and just cut the tape off here. And that means that this template is still nice and usable for next time. And you're not trying to pull the tape off of your paper, you can just add to it, that's fine. Uh, you can also probably just leave the tape on the back of your pinwheel but you can pull it off if you're a perfectionist, like me. All right, so here comes the fun part, you guys. This is the twisty bit. Let's see, make sure 
that we haven't. Uh, yep, we haven't skipped anything. Okay, so here's the twisty bit. Are you ready? Yes, Ellie's way ahead of me. Fancy. Ellie, you've done this before. All right, this might be a bit that if you're still working, you wanna pause and look up so that you can watch this, okay? So what you're gonna basically do is take every corner that has a hole in it, and you're gonna bend it down to the center and lay it on top of the center hole. And all of the holes need to line up, okay? So you're gonna do, that's one, and then here's the next corner. Layer it on top, that's two. And next, and you wanna make sure that you go in the circle, okay? Go around, so don't just like randomly pick them. You need to go in order. And that one, and then that one. But here's the kicker, like you've gotta get all the holes to line up so that you can then put your nail through the holes. So I think what's easier for me was actually to, to put them, to like thread them through the nail and then go through the center hole. They just kind of like to unfold and this seemed easier to me. So I went through and just make sure that you are going in order. So I've poked them all through the nail and now I'm gonna go through the center hole, okay? And- Did they have already written on theirs? Ta-da! Uh, no, I said there, you can write later. Okay. Um, so you can write once it's finished. I, on your instructions, I think it does tell you to write before you fold, but I'm gonna give you guys time to do that after we get off our call, okay? So you can write once it's finished or you can write, um, like if you've paused and you're just watching for right now, you can write on them later. All right. So, yes. Do you, so do you have the washer on it right now or no? I don't. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Not yet. All right. Uh, do you want me to, to thread it again to show you again or we feel okay? I'm going to take that as an, it's okay. So just remember that you're folding each corner that has the hole in it down toward the center and threading them all through the nail and you gotta fold them in order. Um, and I found it easier to kind of fold one down and thread it onto the nail and then fold the next one down and you thread it underneath, you know, onto the nail and you do all of the corners and then you thread the nail through the center hole. So that makes this nice guy. And then you're gonna take your washer and the washer is the little, um, the little metal thing. It's real tiny, little metal circle. Yes, thank you, Ellie. Um, I don't have one here with me. That, that got left at church. I don't have any of this. So good job, Aiden. So you're gonna thread the washer onto the nail, just onto the back there, and that's gonna keep it from bumping up against the, the wood quite so much. That might make it a little bit easier for it to turn, okay? So you're just gonna thread it on there, and it's not gonna be tight, it's just gonna wobble around a little bit, that's fine. And now you're gonna take your stick, your lightsaber, your whatever you wanna pretend it's gonna be. Oh yeah, this thing wants to pop out again. It doesn't wanna stay tight. So that's okay if you have to kind of re-thread it when, after you sit it down, it's okay, you've done it before, you know how to do it, sorry. So um, I'm gonna grab my stick and find the end that's blue. One end is blue. Pastor Tim, very kindly, um, started a hole on one of the sides of that end of the stick. So go ahead and locate that. There's a little hole that's, that's already started and you can take the, um, the price tag sticker off if you want to, because it's on that same end. So mine is right, right there. Yeah, found it. 
Okay, so it helps that the hole is already started. That makes it a little bit easier once you're nailing. You're going to just kind of put the nail, make sure that you still got the washer on there and, and pick up your pinwheel, squish it together again. Um, and you're gonna nail, you're gonna set it into that hole and you're gonna tap it down and you're gonna tap it down until it's not wobbly, okay? Until it's pretty secure. But you don't want the nail to go all the way down because you want to give your pinwheel room to spin. And also because you don't want the nail to come through the back, okay? So that's something to be really careful of. Um, so again, you can use a hammer. You could use anything that's kind of like flattened metal. Um, I've used like a mason jar before because it's not a really hard thing to tap into. So anything like that will work. If you need to wait until a parent gets home to do this part and say, hey, do we have a hammer? Can you help me out with this? You can do that. Um, if you want your pinwheel to be nice and like flat, I think it might help if you stapled it, but I don't have a big stapler at home and I, I just have a mini one and I noticed it wouldn't fit so you could staple this together and I think it might actually spin a little bit easier, but uh, it's okay. It's still pretty. It's still going to give encouraging words, even if it doesn't spin perfectly. So I am going to go ahead and tap this in. So I've set the nail into the hole, which makes it a lot easier. And you are going to have to hold it up a little bit at first. So and put it between two fingers and hold it up straight and kind of tap it. Until it's, it's uh, stable, it's not wobbling. See, not wobbling. Also did not come through the back. That's important. So you don't want somebody to grab that and get hurt. All right, and there. Look at that, Whee! No, okay. Lovely. All right, so once you are done with your pinwheel, that's when you're going to make sure that you write on it, okay? So you can set it down, and again, you can write on it before you put it together if you want. Exactly, good job. Um, but go ahead and set it down, you know, and think about some kind words that you can say. You could say things like, I'm glad to be your neighbor, or God loves you, or uh, what else do we talk about or kind words we could say? Yeah, I'd, I'd be here, interested in hearing your all's thoughts on some things they could write. What could you write? So you're gonna put this in a neighbor's yard. Can you think of some things you might want to say to your neighbor? You're, um, you're safe and loved. Yeah, those are important things to hear right now. We'll get through this together. I have a mug that says that. We'll get through this together as a good one. All of this together. And we know so we are, and we're so ever safe. Never learned those words, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I was going to say stay strong, but That's nice. fail. Yeah, stay strong. I like that one. Those are all good I'm things. Gonna, to I'm going to use that one. Stay strong. Stay strong. Yes, all good things to write. So you're going to write where they can see it, you know, right here on the points. And you might want to try and make an effort to write, you know, cleanly. Or if you have a question about spelling, look that up before you write. Um, what else? Oh, you might want to write, like if you have really small handwriting, because I know some of you do, you might want to try and write a little bit bigger, just so they can see it. 
Uh, but you can, you could write like all in here, you know, this is, I guess, a good part of writing after you've done all the, the flippy work so you can kind of see exactly what's going to be visible. And you could write on these parts here. They're just a little more bubbly and probably a little harder to write on. So write your encouraging things. And then you're going to go and put them in somebody's yard. Now, this might be something that you, um, you do this afternoon before we get back on our afternoon call with lunch or it might be something that you do later today when a parent is home um, if you're not home with you right that's okay you can wait to do that um, if you know your neighbor pretty well you might surprise them and put this in their yard uh, but if you don't know your neighbor all that well so you might need to go and like knock on their door and say, hi, I'm your neighbor and I just wanted to encourage you. And uh, can I put this in your yard? That is good too. Tim, thoughts on that? I think that's great. Um, so have, you've gone over the schedule for today, right? Uh, not, not that far, not past this. Oh, one more word about putting this in the yard. This is a square. It's not pointed. So it's, you're gonna have to like really dig it in there, especially since we haven't gotten a lot of rain. So I might suggest that you see if you could put it in like a flower bed or um, someplace that, that, that uh, is softer ground than like your lawn. Cause into the lawn might be pretty tough to do. Um, if you have a hammer and you've used a hammer, it might be good to take that with you and just kind of tap on the top of your, your stick here. If you can to get it into the ground because it might be a little bit difficult, but I think it'll be easier if you do it in like a flower bed. Okay. Um, but you may need to ask if that's okay. So does everybody have an idea of who you might give a pinwheel to? Abby does, a neighbor you might give a pinwheel to. Yeah, yeah, okay, very good. So the idea is that like you, you can do this and especially if um, you or your neighbor has to be very cautious about the people that you come into contact with right now, uh, this is something you could do and you could talk to them through their door, you know, and just say, hey, I'm letting you know that I'm doing this and you can put it outside. And so it's not something that you have to hand off to them. So we thought that might be good. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and end our recording and then we'll talk about schedule later today.